Hi, in this video we'll be talking about binary numbers. Computers don't understand numbers. They only receive a signal or not. So it's an either-or mechanism. Either there is a signal or not. Two possible values. Signal, no signal. Yes, no. Or 0, 1. That's all computers can understand as far as numbers are concerned. That's why everything we input finally is translated into sequences of zeros and ones. Each of these small breaks is called a bit. But using just the two bits, 0 and 1, we can only make two numbers, 0 and 1. Just like with our decimal system, with our 10 digits, from 0 to 9, we can make only 10 numbers. What do we do if we need a larger number? We just add more digits. So the next number after 9 is 10, with 2 digits, then 11, 12, 13, and so on. We can go on like this until we again run out of digits on the second position, which is the case at 19. Then we increase the first number to 2, thus getting 20. We go on like this until we run out of digits at both positions, which happens at 99. Then we have to add a third digit at the beginning. After we get 999, a fourth digit must be added, and so on. But what about a system that consists of just two digits? Well, actually, it works exactly the same. So we have two digits to work with, 0 and 1. So the first number we can make is 0, and the second number we can make is 1. And now it looks like we're running out of digits. So we have to add another digit at the beginning. Then we have 1 and 0. Then we can change the second digit to 1, and we have 1 and 1. And we're running out of digits again. So we must add another digit at the beginning. Now we have 100. Zero, zero. The next possible number is 101. One. The next one is 110. One, and the next one is 111. One, one. And at this point, we're running out of digits again. So we must add another digit at the beginning. And now we have 100, zero, 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 and so on. This system is called binary. There are only two digits, out of which we can make any number. A sequence of 8 bits is called a byte. Bytes are used as the basic unit of memory in computer science, although sometimes we perform operations on particular bits. That's where the bitwise operators come in handy. So let's have a look at a byte. Here we have an example with the following bits. 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. This is a byte and each 0 or 1 is a bit. So is there a way of telling which decimal number this binary number corresponds to? Sure, we can use a function which does the work for us. The function is end. So let's use it, end. Now if we use a binary number, we use a prefix. The prefix is 0b. And what follows is the binary number itself. So the binary number in our example is 1001101011. Enter. Now, as we can see, this number in binary system corresponds to 155 in our decimal system. Now, this function may also work with two parameters. The first one is the literal binary sequence passed as a string with or without the prefix. And the second parameter is the base, which in the case of the binary system is 2. So here's how it works. And now we have the string representation of the binary number, which is 1001, 1011. Here we don't have this prefix at the beginning. And then the second parameter is the base, 2, because this is a binary system. And the result should be the same. And so it is. But we could also use the same function with the prefix. So 0b. And this should give us just the same result. And so it does. Fine. 
So the end function returns the decimal representation of the binary number passed as the argument. As mentioned before, binary numbers are prefixed with 0b. You can see it here or here. But the number itself consists only of zeros and 1. So this is a prefix, not part of the number. The number is here. Okay. Well, this is the way how we usually do it. But it doesn't hurt to know how to do it manually, how to convert a binary number into a decimal number. First, let's have a look at our commonly used decimal system. Let's pick an arbitrary number like 283. As we use the decimal system, each digit in the number represents a power of 10, from right to left. So the rightmost digit represents 10 to the power of 0. The next to the left digit represents 10 to the power of 1, and so on. If we multiply the digit's values by their corresponding powers of 10 and then sum it all up, we'll get at our value. How look. 3 times 10 to the power of 0, which is equal to 3. 8 times 10 to the power of 1, which is equal to 80. 2 times 10 to the power of 2 which equals 200. Now we have 200 plus 80 plus 3 equals 283. It works the same way for binary numbers or any other system like octal or hexadecimal. What differs is the base which is raised to the increasing powers. So in the decimal system the base is 10. That's why we raise 10 to the powers of 0, 1, 2, etc. In the octal system it's 8. In the hexadecimal system, it's 16. The base in the binary system is 2, and we raise 2 to the powers of 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And then sum it all up. So here's how we calculate the decimal value of the binary number 10011011, mentioned above. From right to left, we have 1 times 2 to the power of 0, which equals 1. 1 times 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. 0 times 2 to the power of 2, which equals 0. 1 times 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. 1 times 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. 0 times 2 to the power of 5, which is 0. 0 times 2 to the power of 6, which is 0. 1 times 2 to the power of 7, which is 128. Now, if we add all these numbers, 128 plus 0 plus 0 plus 16 plus 8 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1, we get our decimal number, 155. So, we have the same result as from the int function before. The maximum decimal value, which can be held in one byte, is 255. This is the case when we have 1's in all positions. Have a look. 1 times 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. 1 times 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 1 times 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 1 times 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 1 times 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 1 times 2 to the power of 5 is 32. 1 times 2 to the power of 6 is 64 and 1 times 2 to the power of 7 is 128. Now, if we sum all these numbers, 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, we get 255. Now, if we have a decimal number and want to know what its binary representation is, we can use the bin function. So, let's now check out whether this number is this number in binary system indeed. So, bin 155. So, this is the decimal number. And the result is 10011011. So, we get the same number as here. Naturally, this can also be achieved by hand. We just have to divide the number by 2 and write down the remainder next to it. Here you can see the remainder in red. The remainder from the first division is 1. Now, then we divide the result by 2 again. The result is 77 by 2. And write down the remainder 
to the right, the remainder is 1, and so on. We keep doing it until we get at 0. This is floor division, which means we get integers as results and not floats. Unlike in typical floor division, here the remainder is not discarded, but taken note of. When done with all the divisions, we just read the remainders in reverse. So as you can see, reading from bottom to top we have 10011011, which is our binary number. As mentioned before, a byte is a very small unit. It can only hold values up to 255. For values greater than 255, we need more bytes. But in real-world conditions, we would have to count the bytes we need in millions, billions or more. That's why we need larger units like kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes and so on. We can use the bit length method on an integer object to check how many bits are necessary to hold the number in binary notation. For example, the number 3 in binary notation is 1 1, so it takes up 2 bits. We can use the function on literals if they are enclosed in parentheses. So let's do it. Here we have the literal number 3 in parentheses. Dot, and here is the function bit. length. And it returns 2. 2 bits are necessary to represent 3 in binary notation. We can also use the function on variables. So, for example, num equals 458. So, num dot bit length It's 9. 9 bits are necessary to represent this number in binary notation. Well, let's check it out. Bin of 458 is... And here are the digits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 digits, so 9 bits. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.